Hey everyone, Chuck here. Power Addicts is the YouTube. FixJeeps.com is the site. Remember them? Remember them? Alright, here's the deal. It's been a day or two since I released a video, and I'm going to put this thing back in gear now. So, my first video I'm going to tell you guys about, we're going to do. Ta da! No, we're not. I'm not going to show you how to install battery cable ends. These are junk. I w one thing I will promise you. I'll show you guys how to hack, how to mod, and do all kinds of stuff. One thing I'll never show you how to do is half a, do something halfway. I'll never show you guys how to install these things because they're absolute junk. But what I will do is install, help show you guys how to install battery cables. This is the right way of doing things. Those battery cable ends are junk simply because they're just a flat piece of metal clamp holding a bunch of wiring in. And you'll see later on the video why. So, eh, let's cut the gabbing crap. Let's get this done. Move it, move it, move it, move it. All right, well, we we'll change the battery cables on this Jeep today. Why? Because they keep leaving me stuck in places. I was at a trail not too long ago doing a little bit of a run and come out to start my Jeep and it went click, click, click. I'm like, oh, not happening. Battery's not dead. Battery is probably less than a year old or so. So I got to beat the battery cable ends a little bit and also she fires right up. So let me explain something to you. This is how this works. Obviously, here's your battery. Right here. These battery cable ends suck. Point blank, that's all there is to it. Uh, I know some people who you know take their the molded ends, which I'll show you in just a moment. I got my new cables. They take these molded ends right here, and they'll cut them off. And because I'll tell you what, right back. Boss, the plane, the plane. Where are you? Oh, there he is. Okay, calm me over. The moment. Okay, here's our two. Here is the good style ends, and there's the sucky style ends. Now, if you're a car, or vehicle, whatever, and mind you, this um, this particular repair or working by any type of vehicle, as long as you get the proper cabling for your vehicle. Now, you see the ends right here have the motor to the cable. That's good. But after a while, the factory ones get all junked up, or the bolt breaks, or you no, know, the, the clamp breaks. Different things happen. And you, they need replaced. Well, some people will go buy these little three dollar ends right here, cut the cable here, and bolt these little cables on those little cable ends right here. Okay, you know that's all fine, and dandy. If you're in a pinch and you ain't got any, any other options, this is not an option to run for full time. They suck. This cable right here, what's happening is this ground right here, this particular bolt right here stripped out. And it's not clamped from a ground cable like it should. And so I have to get out here and just wiggle the cables around and do all kinds of stuff. So people, I've seen videos on YouTube or demonstrating on how to put these ends on. Don't do it, please, seriously. These are like $3. These were like 5 or 8 These are like 8 bucks, I think, or something like that. This is the proper way. Is it more work? Yes. But is it right? Yes. Is it going to give you a lot less trouble? Absolutely. Do this style, not this crap, please. All right, here's your battery cable. You pause it when going down to the starter. What we need to do is find out how long it is. Well, it's like this. If you haven't already purchased your cable, just grab your tape measure. And what we're going to do is measure, kind of get a ballpark figure here. About right there, the 10 inch marker. And about right there, 12, so that's going to be about 22. And yeah, about 26 inches. And your ground cable is going to be somewhere in the ballpark about the same, looks like. Yeah, it looks like about right there, 10 inches or so. Looks like there's about 20. Yeah, it's about 26 inches. But here's the drill piece. I'm not one to put anything back together factory. If you guys haven't watched enough of my videos yet, you will definitely realize that. Now I can put these factory size 
uh, cables back in. And you see, I don't have a whole lot of wiggle room here, which is okay. I mean, you got enough. But if I was to want to reroute my cable into where things look a little neater, I want longer cables. So, what I ended up doing, I got 38 inch cables. That's both for ground and hot side. It's going to give me an excessive amount of cable, but it's also going to give me the ability to tuck my wires where I want them. So, your call, if you want it to be factory correct, I told you the dimensions for the here for the cabling or you can also get your all part store person to say yo what size cables do I need but I like my battery cables to run just a little bit on the long side so therefore I can tuck them where I want them so our next step let's take the batteries cable ends off here and get the cables off the engine be right back all right here's what we got these are 7 16 on this right here the nut on the back side of the clamp is half inch. And here's what you want to do. This back here being a half inch, and we get, we get a wrench back in behind. I always find it easier, easier to reach this one from the back side here. Take your negative side off first. Loosen that clamp. Right there, that loosens that. Set Removes this. There you go. The only thing these clamps are good for is to melt them down for fish sinkers. This particular one right here, this bolt here is stripped out inside this because you got bolt here screwing into lead. Lead is soft. Bad idea. So honestly, seriously people, spend a few extra bucks, get your replacement cables like these, and save yourself a lot of headache. In short, the conclusion is, these suck. Don't. Only in an emergency. All right, I'm gonna pull the positive side off and I'll be right back with you. This right here's wanting to be a little bit of a pain coming off. I've got the bolt loose, but it, the clamp was squeezed tight up on the post. So I was having a hard time moving it. I'll show you a little trick. This end of your wrench right here. Stick it right into the top of that split right there and push the wrench that way, which kind of acts as a lever and opens up that spreads open the cable end right here. Now, if you're running, there it goes. Ta da! And I need to clean my battery cable ends. A battery cable post? Yeah, that's it. I'm trashing these junkers. Another fish sinker. Not really. I'm just gonna throw them in my. Uh, I'll throw them in my junk box. And I really am desperate in need of battery cable in if I use that type of thing. All right. Now our next step. Way down yonder. See in my finger right here. That's where your starter is located. And that uh, hot cable goes all the way down to the starter post right here. So, I'm going to go get my wrench, and I'm going to take it right there. I'll be right back with you. Okay, y'all remember up top where I pointed out to where the battery cable ended at? Right there it is. So, what you got to do is... Oh, uh, shoot. I can't reach my wrench now. Uh, uh, uh. I'm going to look. I think I got the wrong size down here with me. All right, y'all deal with some camera craziness for a moment. I will have to... I screwed up. I didn't go put it my half inch. I got a 916 down here. I grabbed the wrong wrench. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. I got the right wrench. All right. This right here has got to come off. Don't worry about the this cable right here. Just this one's all you got to worry about. And while I was at it, I took the, long, the new cable and strung it down here so I could save myself a trip under here. So, first things first. And notice I'm hitting here. I'll touch the frame. 
that is the reason I tell you guys to take your negative side off first. Really, whenever you're doing any kind of mechanic work, you want to disconnect the negative cable because at any point in time you short out against the frame while hitting a top post, you're going to cause sparks. The sparks are causing damage to other things. So, unhook that negative cable. All right, peeps, I'm going to get this thing off real quick. I can't do that and hold the camera both. I'll be back. And I just know I'm going to get some smart comments about, well, he is going the wrong way. Well, my demonstration was I was coming here and hitting the frame, showing you guys what not to do. The cable goes on. Turn your wrench that way, takes it off. Wrench that way, puts it on. This way, takes it off. Remember, I'll be right back. All right, we got this baby tight here. And I just want to explain something to you real quick. Sometimes when you loosen this up, what you get is... That is actually a post going into the solenoid. This will tend to work loose sometimes when you're fooling with it. So be sure not to have that. You want to tighten it up, but don't get crazy on cranking it down because you want to break it trying to have to get a new starter. That's a bad thing. And when you tighten this down, you want to get hard snug, but don't get crazy tighten it down because you don't want to twist anything in two, like I just mentioned. Buying new parts when it's not necessary is a very expensive thing. So don't eat too many Wheaties or don't be cranking too much protein and get all muscled up and breaking stuff. So, time to go up top. Okay, down there we've got the cable run through. I put it back into its little sleeve here. Put the uh, starter wire back into the sleeve. Protect your wiring. Protect that wiring to help save yourself a lot of headache. And you see I've got quite a bit of cable left over there. Honestly, I'm going to admit that I screwed up. I wanted this cable a lot longer than what it was, and I thought I had gotten this cable long enough. Because my intention was to take it under here, under the battery tray, and bring it up from this side, and then behind here, then my ground cable come from right there. That cuts all my cables back over here. Put some good sleeving around it, protect it from the edge, and such like that. But I didn't, and so the cable's a little too short, so I'm just bringing it up right there. So I'll probably end up at one point or another making me a set of cables because when I, I got some more stuff I'm going to put in eventually I'll end up making my own cables and I'll show you guys how to do that too but for right now this is going to suffice for what I need what in the world I got dogs around to make funny sounds the neighbor's dogs and let's see I'm going to show you guys here in a moment this right here runs to my fuse block because the original one was junk so I want to show you guys how to properly attach this to that. And so now at this point, we're doing the grant negative cable. Negative cable to mine bolts right here. Now in your engine, it may be a little bit different. So basically what you do is you grab the end of your cable here, trace it with your hand, follow it, and see where it goes. So I've got to take that out right there to change out my negative cable. So I'll be right back with you. Alright peeps, I had a little, nothing really bad issue, I just want to point something out, it's just a little bit of a cumbersome pain in the tail. This stud right here actually goes back inside the block, and whenever I was trying to take the nut off from the outside, which I was using a 10 millimeter here, and I'm assuming that's a 13 here, because I used a half inch on it, half inch and 13, and some places are interchangeable. I had to take a wrench, get on the back side of this, hold it in place while I took off the 10 millimeter off the end, because this kept wanting to screw out of the block. So I just want to give you guys a pointer, and if you look real close, see I've had the grinder holding this wrench here to thin it down. That is for my uh, 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 my right angle die grinders and stuff to get back inside the call to change it out to make it thin enough. But by thinning it down for my die grinders, it also works great and get back into stuff like this. So that was a quick little pointer there for you in case you run into that kind of headache. Okay. I have the cable in place, got the nut kind of sort of started. But I want to show you something. I added a couple additions. Here is a 5 inch washer. Here is a 5 inch washer. Well, what that's going to do is it's going to compress all this grounding area together to make sure you got good solid ground. Because it was just that flat area of this nut right here squeezing on a small contact surface of this. So you want to make sure that's good and tight. and. Again, it's a small stud right there, so don't get crazy with the cranking it down too tight now. And I ran it under the battery tray, and it came up here. 
which is going to work for that purpose. And I got to clean my cable with my postings, obviously. So I'll be right back. Okay, before I get into cleaning the uh, battery cable, it's just pretty straight up and simple what that does. I want to take and kind of address my wiring a little bit. This is an extra ground wire that comes from the battery here to the post here. And so I've already stripped it back a little bit. I've got some of these ends here. And I've got the insulation pulled off of these because I don't use it. I, that insulation is next thing to useless. But what I do, I give me some solder and melt me some, tend the wires first, get them coated with uh, solder, then solder them into the lugs here. And then I heat shrink them. So I'm But just when I started making a little bit of progress, the bottom falls out. So, hey, by the way, look. I was going to introduce you guys to something. Look right there. For those of you who's not sure, that's a leaf spring. And it's also a clue as to an upcoming video. Think about it. I mentioned a time or two before about doing a junkyard lift on my Jeep. Well, I got my springs. Coming soon, I'm going to show you guys how to lift the Jeep a little bit on the Jeep. So I'm waiting for this rain to calm down a little bit so I'm not too off the ground. I'll try to finish those cables up. Yeah, be alright. Alright, I've got the ends all soldered up and heat shrink. And the rain subsided for a moment anyway. This still looks like it go off again. Anyway, got this right here done, and uh, this is my extra ground. This runs from my fuse block, like I said, moment, said a few moments ago. Thing of it is, don't be stacking on these terminals like that too much. I mean, you can do it. It's not a major big issue, but if you're going to get to where you're stacking you know, wire after wire after wire, you need a different set of cables. They've got these military-grade cable ends that is actually made to stack extra wires and stuff like that onto it. But honestly, you're better off if you're going to have um, extra accessories you need to power. You just get you a uh, power junction block and just build off that. So, anyway, we're all soldered up, heat shrink, and I'm going to bolt these babies down and tighten them up. Okay, quick pointer for you guys. Your new cables on your battery post, your positive post is normally bigger than your negative post. Physical diameter of it. When you put it on it, it's not gonna it's gonna be very tight going down. You can take it a lot of people take the wrenches and smacking the out of it to get them down there. Don't do that. Because it just ends up booging up the top of them and it looks all tacky and bad and well it just it ain't the right way of doing it. Hammer right here, gotta get soft ends on it. Tap it down. Don't smack it because you want to bust the battery. Just tap it down and it seats just perfectly like that right there. You can see that uh, from the shots I've already cleaned the uh, corrosion and stuff off. I did that in the rain a few moments ago. My camera, without its uh, waterproof shell, is kind of allergic to water. So, anyway, I gotta just get the, some sandpaper or one of those uh, battery post scrubber tools and clean your post real well. So now I'm gonna tie these down. What's up, G Peach? Well, I got a little uh, wet in the process of all this. Good old Tennessee weather. Uh, still a little cloudy, but no rain for the moment, so I guess it waited till I started working for it, so it rained on me. It is what it is. Looky, pretty. This is pretty right here now. Secured, reliable. You can, I mean, it's just tried, proven technology that works. Don't mess with what 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 works. Period. All right. Got pretty. Get rid of the ugly. Now there's going to be people out there that are going to dispute the fact of how well these things work and I've used these things for years and they're just wonderful. Let me tell you something. No, they're not. you got bolts going into lead. Lead is a soft metal. Those threads are stripped. And, okay, so there's going to be the argument, well, just don't tighten them too tight. Well, that's fine too. Don't. After time, vibrations happen. And, I mean, after those threads just get weak. It's lead. I'm sorry, people. It just is what it is. Now, proof that these things suck look right here see the wire that wire is welded to this metal plate now for the people who don't understand electricity that well let me tell you something if you've got wires that's welded to the metal here 
At one point or another, there had to be sparks. In order for there to be sparks, it had to be a bad connection. That is a bad thing on battery cables. You don't know when you're going to be wherever located, and you turn the key, and your key goes click, 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 and you're thinking, oh my gosh, I got a dead battery, when in fact, it's nothing more than a bad connection. Simple stuff like this can be avoided. No cheap stuff, peeps. No cheap stuff. Uh, cabling went pretty easy. Uh, still gonna take some wire ties and tie up a cabling to make sure it's all nice, neat, and tidy. It doesn't get into anything like it should. To not to get into anything. So really, so the other option for an upgrade from these ends is uh, the military style. They're quite a bit more expensive. These I looked at my receipt. These are eight dollars and thirty cents a piece for cables. Three bucks, eight bucks, five bucks a, a, a piece difference for a lot less headache. Great insurance. Now the military styles, you're probably big in the ballpark around thirty bucks or so for those. I don't have any to show you. Um, YouTube channel um, Redneck Garage Dave. He's a cool dude. He did a video on the military styles, so go by and check out his channel. You can see what they're like. Um, so I don't know. There it is. Pretty cut and dry and simple. Now when I start adding more electronic goodies to it, I'll show you how to add in the power panels and stuff. The power junction boxes. So I ain't no need to stretch this out no longer than it needs to be. Alright my YouTube crew, I really appreciate you guys hanging out with me. I'm going to jump on that uh, soapbox one more time. Get rid of those junky cable ends if that's what you got. And do not put them on your vehicle if you need them. Replace your cable the right way. Is it a lot more trouble? Yes, but will it save you trouble in the end? Uh, no, nothing really sucks worse than getting out of some place out in the middle of nowhere and all of a sudden you're hitting a key and you think you got a dead battery or something. You know, I was blessed with the, I was blessed with the upbringing that, you know, I worked on cars a lot as a kid. My dad worked on them, I had uncles who worked on them. My buddy Wayne, he has always worked on them and stuff, so I kind of grew up around this stuff, so, you know. For me to crank a wrench on something or figure out what that what's ailing the car, you know these old school cars like this, it's not a big deal to me. So, but for the people who's not, is the reason I'm making these videos to help everyone out. So, which leads me to one good point: share these videos. I can make the video, you can see the video, but you can share them to help spread the word and help spread the knowledge. You spread knowledge, you're helping people out. That's why this is all being done to begin with. Um. So, so if you like my video, you know what's up. Give me a thumbs up comment if you have it and like I said share and also check out www.fixjeeps.com that's where this video lands plus a lot of other great jeeping videos so go by and check it out so everyone I'm gonna say it again thumbs up if you have it comment if you like subscribe if, if you have it and make those comments everyone I really appreciate everything you do peace out later y'all